Uh, you know, I'm really, truly happy that Susan Sarandon is speaking out for me. And, um, you know, it's, we got to get this out to people. We got to stop this from happening. We got to stop it from not just happening to me, but to other people. And it's just really crazy that it's gotten to this point. Uh, there was an article done recently by a guy named Kenneth Jones, and in it he says, if gossip is to be put to death on September 16th is scheduled, but the actual killer is still alive, the case will be one more example of a system that decides best efforts to be fair and just, or even simply to make sense. I mean, that's the best statement that could be made because of the fact that that's exactly my case is a perfect example of that. You know, Sister, uh, Sister Helen Prezine, uh, Susan Sarandon, you know, Susan just started looking into my case, and she can see for herself that this is truly a case of an innocent man that's going to be executed. And I couldn't ask for a better person to stand up and speak out for me, and I'm glad that she has, and I hope that she'll continue to do so. Uh, because for some reason, Governor Fallon is not looking at it the way that she should be looking at this. She, she should be looking at the fact that there's an innocent man about to be executed, and should be doing everything in her power to stop that from happening. If you believe that your system is fair and just, then why aren't you speaking out to put a stop to this? It just doesn't make any sense. But I'm truly blessed to have so many people that are speaking out in support, and I thank Susan Sarandon for, for coming on board and speaking out for me, and I hope that more people will continue to do so. Because Richard. we have to make a difference. We have to make sure that our voices are heard. Richard, you and I have spoken about your case many times before, but viewers who are watching this for the first time will listen to a man who's on death row saying he's innocent and think, well, hang on, doesn't everyone say that? Doesn't everyone plead innocence when they are facing what you were facing? So why should, why should people believe you that you are innocent of this? Well, for one, I am. Uh, <laughs> I do understand what you're saying, and I think that's why... I've always, when I've done uh, interviews with people, I've always invited them to go to richardeglosser.com and they can see all the stuff for themselves and they can read it for themselves and come to the decision by themselves. But all you have to do is look into my case and you can see everybody who has, which is thousands and thousands of people who have looked into this case can see that it's truly a case of innocence. Um, I've got attorneys that have come on board pro bono, investigators that have come on pro bono because they've all looked into my case and they think it's a big travesty of justice. I mean, we got to stop killing innocent. we got to stop killing people, period, in this country. But when you start killing the innocent and you think that that's okay, that's just craziness. We, we can't be acting like that in, in this country especially because here we are supposed to be setting examples for other countries. And we're setting a really bad example by executing innocent people. But the only thing I can say to truly answer your question is to ask people to please just go to Richard E. Glossop.com, look for yourself, everything that's out there, and you will see for yourself that what I'm saying is the truth. That I am innocent, and they are going to execute an innocent man if it's allowed to take place. You've said before that you've made mistakes in the aftermath of the Van Trees murder, that... Um, you were told by Justin Sneed that he had committed this murder and you didn't believe him and you didn't tell anyone else. You didn't talk to the police at the time. You now accept that that was a mistake and made you look like a guilty man. Well, it did, and there's reasons for that. Um, you know, after that happened, I didn't believe him when he first told me that. I didn't believe it at all because I, I knew Justin and I just couldn't see him doing something like that. Secondly... When I did want to go to the police and tell them what I had been told, I had asked somebody, should I do it? And they suggested that I didn't. And this person even told detectives that. So, I mean, it was, I just followed somebody else's advice and it was, ended up being bad advice and it made me look bad. But I did not have anything to do with this man's death. I didn't participate in his death. And, you know, it's just, the sad thing about it is people react differently to, to situations, um, and, and that's what I did. I just reacted badly to a situation. I shouldn't have listened to nobody else, but when I, when I decided to, that I wanted to go tell the police what I was told, I should have went then, right then and told them, and I listened to somebody else instead, and it put me in a bad light. So I did make mistakes by listening to other people, and it just ended up making me look like 
a bad person when I wasn't. It's just a mistake. And I don't deserve to die for making a mistake. Back in January, you came within 24 hours of an execution date. You're now six weeks from a new execution date. How do you think it's going to go? What's going to happen in the next six weeks, do you hope, that's going to make September the 16th a date when you avoid execution? Um, you know, the first one, uh, you, you just got to believe. I've had more than two dates um, set for me, and they've, they've all ended uh, with a stay, and I'm hoping this will do the same. You know, we're before the Supreme Court again, and my case is the, the front case again because of the fact that, you know, Justice Breyer, who spoke out against the death penalty, saying, that, you know, we're executing innocent people in this country, and maybe it's time to that we look to abolish the death penalty in this country, and it should be. Because it's not okay to execute any innocent people, any. So I gotta have, and, and I know this is gonna sound stupid to a lot of people because I've had faith in the justice system all the way up to this point. They still haven't got it right, but I still have to have faith in our justice system that it's gonna come out right. I mean, I, I'm hoping that the Supreme Court will hear this case finally and see it for what it is, and that's the fact that an innocent man is gonna be executed. I mean, there's been investigative reporters all through the United States and even into the countries that have been, you know, that have looked into my case deeply, um, like the quote that I read to you earlier, and it just shocks them to see that I'm on death row. It just they, they can't figure out how that could be possible. How can a guy who never committed a crime in his life did everything right, paid his bills, paid his taxes? Now I'm fighting for my life. How do you go from that to that? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Richard Glossop, thanks very much indeed for talking to us. That's Richard Glossop speaking to us from death, low, death Row at the Oklahoma State Penitentiary in McAllister, Oklahoma. Back to you, Darshini.